We kept saying to the government, what is it exactly that's harmful to minors but not obscene? What is it that is prurient to a 16-year-old and not prurient to a 17-year-old? The government ultimately said they couldn't identify a single website that fit into that category. So we gave some sample photographs to the government and we said, is this harmful to minors or isn't? Tell us, we want to understand what this concept means. And my favorite irrationality in the government's response was uh, a, a web page, of, a Playboy web page that showed a woman with her breasts naked, they said, was not harmful to minors. A penthouse page that showed a woman naked with her breasts bared, they said was harmful to minors. And then there was a third web page from a less well-known website in which the woman was naked from the way stuff with her breasts bared, but there were uh, stars that had been su superimposed so that you couldn't see her nipples. They said that was harmful to minors. Now, in my mind, this is as irrational as the FCC trying to define indecency. It proves that the, the definition of harmful to minors can't be adequately applied. I'm here to talk about the Child Online Protection Act. It is a statute passed by Congress 10 years ago which makes it a crime to engage in speech on the internet if that speech is harmful to minors. It's fairly routine First Amendment law that the First Amendment prohibits content-based discrimination against speech, prohibits uh, the criminalization of speech, particularly if there are uh, less restrictive or more narrowly tailored alternatives available. And the fight has been primarily and was primarily at the trial court over internet content filtering. Uh, the internet content software filtering is very effective. The government spent a million dollars on this study. The study concluded that almost all of the internet content filtering is over 95% effective and often as high as 98% effective in blocking sexually explicit speech to minors if the parent has installed it and if the parent has turned it on. Then there was evidence about the effectiveness of COPA as an alternative. And here are a number of ways in which, which filtering software is substantially more effective than COPA would be. The most obvious example is that COPA does not reach overseas speech. Nobody really thinks we can prosecute a website in Bulgaria that has sexually explicit speech on it. And therefore, COPA will only affect those websites that are domestically hosted. Now, by contrast, filtering software does in fact get overseas websites just as easily as it gets domestic websites. And filtering software also uh, reaches all of those other protocols. Filtering software can be used to block video and audio and news groups and email and anything else that can be transmitted over the internet. And remember, the, what we're talking about here is harmful to minor speech. We're not talking about obscenity and we're not talking about child pornography. Obscenity and child pornography are illegal on the internet. They're illegal regardless of COPA, even if COPA is in, it never goes into effect, obscenity and, porno and child pornography will continue to be illegal.